Bienvenue à Fontainebleau pour cette septième saison du festival Series Series. Nous avons discuté avec Peter Arianus, créateur de la série Conspiracy of Silence. Hi Peter. Hi. Thank you for accepting our invitation. My first question is, what is the pitch of your show Conspiracy of Silence? Uh, the show is about uh, the Swedish weapon industry and it revolves around a man who was a part of it a long time ago, 30 years ago, and had to get out and went into exile for 30 years. He now returns to make chaos and revenge the guy who destroyed his life uh, all those years ago. And how did you come up with this idea as a starting point with uh, selling gun, guns in Sweden? Uh, I, actually, at first, it was just uh, a revenge story. But as I started to think about but what would his story be? What, why is he coming back? What, those questions you need to answer. I ran into uh, facts about the Swedish gun industry, which I hadn't thought about. All right. And I realized, why have no one told this story? Uh, what happens today that, that Sweden, who we all consider being, uh, at least us Swedes, consider yeah. being like a moral country with high standards pacifist, yeah. and pacifist and peace negotiation, we're also like, almost top 10 in, in manufacturing guns and selling guns to the world. And the gun industry is responsible for 45% of all the corruption in, in the world trade. And if we're a part of that, are our hands clean or are, is there blood on our hands? So I went and did my research and I, I asked them, this is my take on it, would this be possible at all? And they were always like, no, it's worse. It's oh. much worse than that. <laughs> How did you look for those informations? Uh, it's interesting. Was, uh, there's a lot to read about uh, how the industry works. The funny thing there is that the people involved in that, the, the bad guys, mm -hmm. they're all named by name because people know who's crooked and who's not, but they can't get to them uh, because it's so hard to prosecute and stuff. Uh, and when they try to prosecute, uh, often enough politicians comes in and, and says no we can't go further with this because we have a really sensitive relationship to Saudi Arabia we can't talk about that or to South Africa we want to sell our flight fighters to South Africa so we can't go deeper into this stop it when you call or when you try to research something you end up with a wall of people saying oh we can't talk about that then, then I have to make it up what, what happens uh, and that's, of course, a big liberty as a writer to, to be able to fictionalize. And, and there is a really complex relationship with the main character, with his daughter and her, her adoptive father. How did you manage to build this relationship between those three characters, which is really complex? There is a big twist then in the end of the first episode uh, where we find out that this guy who was away for 30 years comes back and realizes that the woman he, he tried to save, his love of his life, actually she didn't know, they didn't know that she was pregnant as he left. And the guy, his former best friend that got him into the industry, full of guilt, had to raise that child. And now the Robert character comes back and realizes that the guy I'm coming home to kill has raised my daughter. She calls him dad. It turned out to be like a theme for the series as well, with father, fathers and daughters, and uh, that made it more interesting. I, I didn't want to make a, a James Bondy show with, with guns and, and bribes and uh, smuggling stuff. I wanted to make a show about people who got affected by this Robert character coming home. For me, it feels like this is my baby, uh, and I, I really, really wanted to make it the way I like to watch television. What shows do I like to watch? And how do you feel about showing your baby at the festival? Yeah, that's really scary. <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> really scared. Uh, but, but I know I'm proud of it, but of course if it's, you know, if it's size all along and people are falling asleep in their seats, then we did something wrong. Uh, I have to learn from that, but I don't think that will happen. I, I'm, I'm proud of it and I hope uh, they will enjoy it. But it's, this screening is, uh, it's gonna be, uh, a nervous hour uh, and then in September when the show actually premieres uh, I'm gonna be very very nervous. All right thank you very much Peter for answering our questions. Thank you. Thank you.